I'll be speaking about what skills do tomorrow's journalists need. But before I start, I would like to tell, to tell you a little story. I was a journalist for about 30 years, and I'd like to tell you how I became a journalist. So there was a, a call. A new newspaper was about to be launched in Malta. It was the, the Independent way back in 1992. And there were some call for some managerial posts. And uh, I had studied journalism. I had done a, did a PGC. I was teaching media in, in state schools. And I decided to apply for the post of news editor. So the post of news editor in newspapers is quite a powerful post because you get to decide on what stories are followed in the paper. So, um, And when I went for the interview, there were most of the owners of the paper, and they had an American consultant. And sort of we were mapping out the kind of stories that we have to do and that I would like to see in this new newspaper so the newspaper is, is bought. So how to break into a market, how to, how to, how to come out with new stories, different stories from, from the Times, which was the dominant newspaper at the time. And uh, while discussing this, uh, the owners of the paper were constantly, um, we brought up the, the issue of investigative journalism. And they said, yeah, wow, super, you know, we'd like to see you, you know, on the streets of Pacheville investigating drug, drug dealing and taking pictures of that and reporting about it. And I said, you must be joking, you know. I mean, you know, we can't be the police. We can't do the role of the police. We can investigate stories, but not in the way you're thinking. And we had an argument about this. And this American consultant um, sort of stepped in and said, she said, in a, a typically American voice, said, Natalie, no, she said, I have this little space on the paper, you know, 100 words, and I need to fill it in tomorrow. What will you write about? And I said, I said, strawberry jam. And it's strawberry jam? Why would you write about strawberry jam? And I said, because that's what my mother was making before I came here. You know, and, and sort of the interview ended there, and I got the job. And uh, weeks later, we were in the newsroom, and this, this Shazza said, I would tell you why you got the job, she said. She said, you got the job because of the way you, answer, you answered the question. She said, you showed me, and I had to convince the board that you could write about anything. Okay? And this is one of the things, and I'll come back to this, in, 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 in the skills that journalists need now and will need tomorrow. Um, so, in my view, the basic qualities of what makes a good journalist were, are, and remain the same. So, so people are not journ born journalists, okay? Uh, people can become journalists, and both qualities and skills can be taught. And uh, in 1993, during a speech at the uh, BBC Award to Journalists, there was an American journalist who was brought over to, to deliver a speech. It was William Pfaff, who was quite a prominent journalist at the time, speaking against the Vietnam War and stuff like that. And uh, the screens went off. And, uh, well, William Pfaff said... Um, I believe that journalists should not be educated as journalists. She said the techniques of the trade are not difficult to learn. A journalist should have a wide education, a wide culture. He should study literature, society, history, history above all, or economics. In short, the journalist should know what he's writing about. So, you know, the techniques of the t trade are not difficult to learn. You know, how things have changed. You know, William Puff, who, who could not have known about the revolution Internet was about, about to make. In 1992, Internet was just beginning. Um, but I do agree that the journalist should have a wide general education, a wide culture, that a journalist should study literature, society, history, or economics. Uh, this ties in beautifully about what you're saying about um, being active citizens. So in, in education, in every aspect of education, okay, um, I believe that, that people have to know about the world around them, so, and, and journalists should be champions of this. Um, some personal observations. You know, I've, I've always been interested in news since childhood, and... Um, reading, um, writing. So uh, apart from journalism, I was very interested in social history. I was very active in environmental NGOs uh, up to the time when I became a journalist in, in, in 1992. And I felt that activism and research helped me become a better person and a better journalist because they helped me question. They helped me see things from different perspectives. And this is one of the things that I think journalists in future still need. They do need it now and will still need this, this skill in future. So, you know, social history helps me understand the change and whys. Um, you know, and I would ask you by show of hands, how many of you know what a letter to the editor is? Okay, you know, four people? That, that, it, it shows your age, doesn't it? Huh? It shows your age. So, in the past, we used to write a letter to the editor, and it would take three weeks for it to be published. Um, you know, that, that's, that's my first letter to the editor. Um, I was bird watching in a, in a place in Salina, and, and they were shooting fish. And I thought it was so unusual I wrote about it in the press. I was 17 when I wrote this. Um, but, you know, today if you want to say something, you just say it on social media, 
um, it will be pro probably seen by more people than, than that, that letter was read, actually. So um, there is immediacy, and more people will, 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 will read it. So um, in journalism, this, this revolution has been accentuated by, by, accelerated by the medium, by internet, which makes it possible to, 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 to speak to a wider audience in a, in a shorter time. When I became a journalist, it was enough to know how to write, to find sources and stories, and to be good at interviewing people. So those were the basic skills that you needed. There's still the basic skills that you need to, to do today, but you need to do more. I also used to take pictures to illustrate my stories, and we used to have conflicts with photographers saying, you're taking my job. And uh, I used to say, you know, I, I try to take pictures because they illustrate better what I want to, to show in my, in, in my stories, and I, I, I did that for a long time. Okay, print is dying medium. I'm running because this should have been 20 minutes, and I was told I have to do it in 15. So today's journalism is mostly online, okay? It reaches more people than it used to. Um, but it's more, journalism today is more about visuals, about pictures, about videos. Um, so it would immensely help, and that's what we do with MCAST. Uh, we try to give uh, students skills uh, that they can film their own stories, they can edit their own stories, they can, they can, they can do it on their own. And uh, today we also have a headline generation. So I like to read long stuff, I like to read books. But today, people just often read the headlines and the first few sentences. So you need to learn how to write more succinctly, okay? Saying it with less words. And, uh, and journalists need to, to, to learn this uh, uh, very much. The purpose of news. So what will the purpose of, of news, what will be the purpose of journalism in 10 years' time? Because that helps us. Knowing this will help us see what skills uh, are needed for the future. So, so right now, the definition of purpose of news is to provide people with information they need to make the best possible decisions about their lives, in whatever sector it is, whether it's fashion, whether it's politics, whether it's, it's, it's whatever you want to, 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 to buy or, or do. So will this remain the same? Um, do people still have faith in journalists? We've been seeing about declining trust in journalism. Will they still have faith in journalism in the future? I mean, these are questions that, that, that uh, we cannot really answer. But it's good to think about them, and it's good to see how we can, how we can work uh, around it. So journalism should be interesting, or maybe it should be even entertaining. Um, I think that the, the, the first value of news should remain utility, to empower people by informing people. Okay? Um, but do people want to be empowered, or do, do they just want to be led? I mean, this is a very important question with this neoliberalism that we have all around us today. Um, you know, so what will journalism and news be like in future? Um, I think certain principles will remain. Truthfulness, accuracy, fact-based stories, independence, objectivity, impartiality, holding power to account. And I've put power in red, because by power I don't mean just government and ministers and, and politicians. Power, big businesses is power, okay? Big businesses have all, all, always have influence in, in politics, okay? And um, we've seen this in Malta even through the killing of, 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 of Daphne here. So, so these principles, you know, you know, unless a journalist gives us this, who will? Okay? Who will give us true, accurate, fact-based uh, pieces? Okay? Um, so, so we really have to fight and convince the people by our actions that journalism is, is, is still needed. Okay? So what are the ingredients of a good journalist now? And will, will these be the same in future? I think curiosity is, is, an important, is a very important uh, factor. A successful journalist is constantly questioning. A good journalist is always observing. Um, uh, and I tell students, you know, walk about with your eyes open, all right? Good journalists should be able to see a story in everything they see. And I just gave you an example about the strawberry jam about this, okay? So um, I told you how I got my first job in journalism. We didn't do just stories about, about strawberry jam in, in, at the Independent. So I mean, you know, this was, this was one of the first stories we did in the Independent. It became an international story instantly. Um, even though internet was, was slow at the time. Um, it dealt us, we had a, a very bad hijack in Malta in, in, in the 1980s. Almost everybody got killed except the hijacker and two or three people. Um, uh, and because the laws in Malta did not contemplate terrorism as a, as a crime at the, at, at, at the time, I mean, he was just sentenced for, to 25 years in prison. And because of the way that, that, that governments were very loose in giving remission to prisoners, um, so he was going to be freed 17 years early. He just saved, served eight years in prison. And we did the story. The story was denied. He was released, and he was arrested by the Americans in Ghana, and now he's serving time in the US. So 
other stories, I, I, have, I have to skip some of this, you know, but, but even, even small stories, you know, about a, a man who, who, who earned, earned his living working in a shop uh, one meter by one meter in Valletta, and, and, and you know, he was a, 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 a clockmaker and a, a watch repairer, you know, most tiniest shop ticking to a close. Um, but we also investigated stuff like, like, like we had this Cash for Cancer Foundation, um, a foundation which was formed by a model who was very popular in Malta. She, unfortunately, she contracted cancer, she survived, set up a foundation, and then we found out that she wasn't using the money to help the patients, okay? So about 90% of the funds were, using for, were used for wages and 10% for cancer uh, services. E eventually, following some, some of our stories, the, uh, this was uh, wound up. Stories about immigration, you know, well before immigration became the problem that, that we know it now. So, so you had these people from Liberia, six months in prison because they didn't have a passport. Okay, so we're uh, raising these issues at the time too. Even stories about common people. Okay, and, and when I was doing some research about this presentation and I came across this article, I said I have to show it. I mean, this, this person is now dead. Um, he was about 90 when I interviewed him, so he's, he's, he's talking about tough times, you know, and he's saying people waste too much nowadays. You know, today people have everything except happiness. He said this 20 years ago. It's probably more true now than it was then. And uh, Stories like this, um, this youth died because he choked on a piece of meat and his parents were sharing their experience about it and, and urging restaurants to take precautions. You know, staff should, should be able to, to do the Heinrich maneuver, okay, at least. I mean, unfortunately, such stories often go unheeded and we had about six more deaths like those uh, since this taking place. So I tell journalism students, you know, use all your senses, not just sight, you know, smell, hear, taste, okay? Be enthusiastic about whatever you do. Right? Enthusiasm, enthusiasm drives us, okay? You need to be enthusiastic about the story you are following. So don't sit back and relax. Be enthusiastic, you know. Be aware, be sensitive, be alive. Take me there with your words. Take me there with the way you say the story if you're reading a podcast, okay? Um, stamina, endurance, determination, willpower, confidence. Have faith in yourself in what you're doing, okay? But don't confuse, um, don't confuse confidence with arrogance because Overconfidence can, can easily lead to, to, to arrogance. Perseverance, okay? Extra mile to fact check. Find ways around the nose and closed doors that got slammed on your face, you know? Um, you need a lot of perseverance to do this. So have you ever wondered why you say chasing stories? Because you have to chase stories, okay? Um, you need to have the best oral skills you can get. Um, a good way with words, a brilliant narrative, you know? Take me there with what you write, all right? Um, uh, infuse energy into it, okay? Interpersonal skills, you need to have a Okay, away with people, break easily into, into conversation. Be a good listener, don't assume anything. Um, you know, look out for emotions. Look at, at, at the body language, not just words, okay? You're interviewing someone, look at the, at the emotions. Um, don't interrupt when people are speaking, you know. Networking, find contacts, okay? Cultivate them without getting too close because you might have to read about, uh, write about them. So if I look back at, at my journalistic career, I've seen, I don't know, five, six police commissioners come and go, Prime Ministers come and go, Ministers come and go, and you're still a journalist. So don't get too close to your sources, okay? Um, uh, work with high ethical standards and integrity. This is of utmost importance, okay? Ethics in journalism plays a, a big role. People often have preconceived notions about what journalists are, who they are, and their biases. So um, it's even more true in a small country like Malta where everybody knows everybody else, who have a different reality. Um, so if you work for the Times, for instance, you're kind of perceived as being anti-government because you're, you're, you're unveiling uh, certain, certain, certain stories. So, but don't this, let this condition you, okay? But don't give critics ground to criticize you. Work at the highest level, okay? Um, so at MCAS, we are doing this. So, so I think we're doing, doing, giving students good grounding in what journalism is, you know, and putting things into practice, you know. Um, uh, showing, I don't know. Show a picture like this, you know, and uh, story ideas, all right? What stories can we write from seeing this picture? Okay, so, so you know, a robin, Christmas is around the corner now. Um, you know, why are robins on Christmas cards? What do they represent? Um, I won't tell you, there's a story, so Google it. Um, berries, you know, jam maybe, okay, or smoothies, all right? So, so think out of the box when, when trying to do a story. And uh, we also work on journalistic skills for hard news stories. So during the, the last the election campaign, I'm winding up three more slides. Um, journalists were encouraged to come up with questions and, and, and we discuss them in class, you know, and we discuss these ideas and, uh, you know, what, what difference would it make to change some words in the questions and, and stuff like that. So, um, so second year students, for instance, had an assignment they had to film 
three stories. We made a bulletin with, with, with these nine stories. We see it. We, crit we criticize it. Uh, they see what they did wrong, but more importantly, what they can do to make it better, okay? And uh, PowerPoint is not We need to anymore. conclude, um, Natalie. Yeah, we're concluding. Thanks. So basically, essentially, um, uh, I think that the skills that the journalists need today um, will still be the skills that they need tomorrow, but they need flexibility, and they need to learn how to do more, okay, on their own, because very often they're going to be on their own in the world on their own. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Natalino.